Yeah, I'm super excited. I think the fact that it's in England, my home country, and obviously I played for England over 50 times. I'm super excited for it. I think women's football in England this year has gone to a completely different level when it comes to marketing and radio, television, sponsorship. So the perfect time is now. And I think England are really, really well equipped for it. But there's also other teams that, you know, it can almost be your downfall playing in your home country because there's more pressure and people want to maybe cause an upset. And there's other top teams as well. So I'm mindful of, you know, saying England are going to go on to win the tournament. I hope we do. But I think there's still other strong teams like France, Spain, Germany. You can never write these types of teams off. It's difficult because I get asked that question a lot. And obviously me being English, people expect me to say England. But I honestly think, I think Spain are going to be the strongest. I, I like them. I like Alexa Puteas. I like their players. I think Jenny Hermoso, the fact that she's you know out of an injury is a big loss for them. But the way that they play, they've taken their game to another level, especially in, in the Spanish league with Barcelona. And a lot of their players have obviously scattered all around as well. So I think Spain are going to be a, a massive, you know, team in this competition along with France I was still a little bit surprised that Amandine Henri was left out of the squad um, I can't believe it she's one of my favourite players to watch she's scored an unbelievable goal in the Champions League final and that's not the only I mean she's not known for a goal scorer in prowess but she's such a fantastic player and the fact they can leave players like this out of their squad um, shows you how strong they are so you can never write those types of teams off The ruthlessness that I think Serena Wiegmann's brought to the team, I think is different. I like the fact that there's no loyalty. And what I mean by that is that she's come into this job and she's picking players. I think there's some players that have been picked based upon uh, leadership and based upon their role within the squad, not necessarily in the starting eleven. But I do think that she's, she's not scared to make decisions. And I think sometimes when I've played for England and England recent teams of recent years, it's been based upon kind of popularity or what they've done in the past. Whereas I think she's just come in and picked the genuinely picked the team that she believes is the best team. Hopefully she can be the missing puzzle piece because England should be winning the tournament at this point. The amount of backing from the FA, the players, you know, everything around the women's game in England, there can be no excuses anymore. So I do think that we should definitely, you know, be up there. I think Leah is a fantastic role model. I think she's definitely a captain for the future. I like Leah as a person on and off the pitch. I played with Leah a number of times when I was at Arsenal. But for me, at this moment in time, there was only one person and that was Lucy Bronze. That's who should have been given the captaincy. And until Lucy decides to retire from international football, I believe that she should have been given the captaincy. That's just my opinion.